The sun had barely risen on the horizon when David woke up with a start, his mind reeling with the urgency of the situation that awaited him. He rubbed his eyes, trying to shake off sleep, while the relentless clock on the wall seemed to mock his haste. The documents needed to be delivered by the end of the day, and he was aware that the margin for error was minimal. David leapt out of bed, slipped on his shoes, and grabbed the meticulously organized stack of papers from his desk. He quickly flipped through them, reviewing each line, checking the signature beneath his own. Authentication was crucial, an indisputable part of the process. If those documents didn't reach the company headquarters on time, years of hard work could be wasted in an instant. With a quick glance in the mirror, David smoothed his tousled hair and hastily adjusted his tie. His reflection showed the features of someone who had spent the night wide awake, but he didn't have time to worry about his appearance now. With the documents firmly stacked in a folder, he hurried out of the house, almost stumbling over the steps, barely noticing the forgotten coffee on the table. The street was just beginning to come alive, with drowsy pedestrians and cars starting to appear. David looked around, trying to spot a vague sign of a taxi, but the street was strangely deserted. Impatient, he decided he couldn't rely on anyone. It was an urgency only he could resolve. He began to run, his steps echoing on the empty sidewalks. He hardly noticed the world around him, focused solely on his destination. His legs moved at a frenetic pace, his heart beating in rapid rhythm. Minutes passed like seconds. David couldn't help but feel like he was racing against time itself. Finally, he reached the main avenue, where taxis usually clustered. However, his agony increased when he saw that the area was empty. He was about to let out a frustrated exclamation when a yellow cab suddenly appeared in the distance. David waved his arms, signaling desperately, and the taxi approached with a screech of brakes. Upon getting into the taxi, he explained the address to the driver of the nearest notary office. His eyes still fixed on the taxi's dashboard clock as the driver sped through the streets. Each traffic light seemed to take an eternity to change, and David's anxiety grew with every stop. Finally, they arrived at the notary office. David jumped out of the taxi, handing over a note and barely waiting for the change. He rushed towards the door, nearly colliding with a woman leaving offering a quick apology, and entering the building. As he entered the notary office, he was momentarily disoriented. A crowd of people was waiting to be served, there was no time to wait there. David decided to search for another nearby office. To his despair, the other notaries weren't open at that time. However, to his luck, David spotted on a narrow side street a notary he had never noticed before. This notary was small, with carved wooden furniture, resembling an old library. Upon entering, realizing that the waiting line seemed much smaller, a sense of relief washed over David. However, something strange began to happen as he waited for his turn. The people crossing his path seemed not to notice him. He would move aside to avoid collisions, but no one reacted to his movements. Their vacant stares and indifferent expressions made it clear that he was invisible to those around him. Perplexity soon turned to frustration. David couldn't believe what was happening. He looked around, trying to get people's attention, but it was as if he were a shadow, a mere spectator in a world that ignored him. He even waved his arms frantically, but it only made him feel even more absurd. He finally approached the notary. The notary was focused on a typewriter, oblivious to his presence. David was about to shout in frustration when the notary lifted his head and looked directly at him. For a moment, David felt a glimmer of hope, but the notary's expression remained unchanged, as if he were looking into emptiness. Tired of being ignored, of being treated as if he weren't real, David headed for the door, determined to get out of that nightmare and try to understand what was happening. However, when he turned the doorknob, it didn't budge. He pulled, pushed, and shook the door, but it remained stubbornly locked. His desperation grew, and he pounded on the door, shouting for help. Nothing happened. You're trapped here, my friend, a voice behind him said. David quickly turned to find a middle-aged man dressed in a flawless suit, with an enigmatic smile on his lips. 
He was the only person in the notary office who seemed capable of seeing and hearing him. Who are you? What's happening? David demanded, his hands trembling with frustration. The man smiled enigmatically, as if about to reveal a great secret, and walked through a side door of the notary office. David tried to follow him, but as he passed through the door, he mysteriously ended up back in the previous location. He tried to open different doors, but they all led him back to the starting point. His frustration grew as he realized he was trapped. He was surrounded by a prison that defied logic and reality. David pulled his phone out of his pocket and tried to call the company to notify them that he would be late, but as he dialed the number, his face contorted in frustration. There was no signal. He looked at the signal bar on his phone. It was empty. He moved around, searching for a better area, but the situation remained the same. No signal. This can't be happening, he muttered to himself, shaking the phone as if that could magically bring back the connection. The feeling of being trapped in a nightmare returned with full force. Determined to find a solution, David turned to the notary in the notary office. The old notary was sitting behind the counter, slowly flipping through an old register book. He looked up as David approached, his calm eyes fixed on David's face. This time, he didn't ignore him as before. Can I help you, young man? He asked. Sorry to bother you again, but I need to make an urgent call, and my phone has no signal, David said, his anxiety evident in his voice. The notary studied David for a moment, as if assessing his sincerity. Then, he nodded slowly. I understand. Come with me. David followed the notary to a small room at the back of the notary office. There was an old phone on the table, looking out of place amidst the antique furniture and dusty paperwork. I'm aware that you've been here before, the notary began. And during my research, I found something you might not know. David furrowed his brow, unsure of what the notary was about to say. You have a protested debt in this notary office, the notary said calmly. David's eyes widened in shock. That's not true. I never had a protested debt here. The notary leaned forward, his eyes fixed on David's. I have documents suggesting otherwise. If you want to use the phone, you'll have to sign a document agreeing that, if you don't pay this debt, it will be legally recognized. David was indignant. This is absurd. I don't owe anything to this place. The notary just shrugged, as if accustomed to such protests. The choice is yours, young man. If you want to use the phone, sign the document. David was torn. He knew every minute counted, but the idea of signing a false document to gain access to the phone deeply bothered him. However, the thought of being trapped in that place with no way to contact the outside world was even more terrifying. After a moment of internal conflict, he finally agreed. The notary brought a paper and an old pen. David quickly read the document, his indignation growing with each line. However, he figured the document wouldn't hold any legal value outside that strange place. He signed the document with contained anger and pushed the paper towards the notary. Now, let me use the phone. The notary took the paper, examined the signature, and nodded. He stood up and gestured to the phone again. Feel free. David picked up the receiver and dialed the number of his home. His heart was pounding as the call rang. After a few rings, the call was answered. Hello? A voice said, but it wasn't his wife's voice. It was a feminine voice, aged by time. Hello, it's me, David, he said, confused. The voice on the other end seemed perplexed. David? Is this some kind of prank? The woman hung up the phone shortly after. David hung up the phone and looked at the notary. I have to leave. Wait a moment, young man, the notary said with a perceptive look. You signed the document. Now, you have a debt to pay. David looked at him, his frustration growing. I only signed that to use the phone. I owe nothing to this place. The notary smiled with a hint of malice. Ah, but you have now assumed that debt. And as is tradition in this place, you must pay with your work. David felt a knot forming in his stomach. He was at a crossroads again, 
forced to make decisions in a place where the rules seem to be dictated by a twisted logic. You'll work here in the notary office until you've paid off your debt, the notary continued, and only then will you have a chance to return. David clenched his fists, his mind spinning with thoughts of escape. He couldn't accept this situation. He couldn't be trapped in that place indefinitely. The notary nodded, as if expecting that response. Very well, young man, come with me. David followed the notary down the hallway to a room at the back of the notary office. The room was filled with dusty shelves, laden with old files and documents. Desks were covered in paperwork and inkwells, and a dusty window let in a pale light. Your work starts here, said the notary, organizing and cataloging the records of this notary office. David looked around the room, his dismay growing. It seemed like a tedious, almost endless task but he had no choice, he knew he needed to fulfill his part to find a way out. Days turned into weeks, David delved into the work, sorting documents, digitizing records, and keeping everything meticulously organized, he was determined to fulfill his part of the bargain and find a way back to his life. One afternoon, while flipping through one of the old records, an idea began to form in his mind, he couldn't escape through the doors, but perhaps he could find a way out through the records. He had to find a pattern, a clue, anything that could indicate an escape route. He devoted himself even more to his work, examining each file, deciphering ancient writings, and cross-referencing information. As he delved into the records, he began to notice some strange inconsistencies. Names repeated, dates seemed displaced, and certain details didn't make sense. David spent sleepless nights, absorbed in his search for an exit. He was determined to unravel the mystery of that place and find the way back to his family. He was determined to use the environment against itself. Finally, after weeks of exhaustive analysis, David found something. A series of numbers and letters that seemed to repeat across different records. They appeared to be some sort of code, a pattern that shouldn't be there. It was as if someone had left a message amidst the ancient records. With his heart racing, David wrote down the patterns, compiling them into a list. He was closer than ever to uncovering the secret behind that place. With the information in hand, he returned to the records room, determined to use what he had learned. He began to search for specific records with the patterns he had identified. As he discovered more and more correlated records, he realized that these were the exit points. The records containing the patterns were the portals that would lead him out of the notary office. His heart pounded as he approached a shelf containing one of the records on his list. He opened the book with trembling hands, his eyes desperately searching for the patterns. And then, there they were, like a key to freedom. David closed his eyes for a moment, taking a deep breath. He knew this was his moment to escape. He pressed the patterns with his fingers, as if activating a switch. And then, a strange sensation took over his body. When he opened his eyes, he was back in the hallway of the notary office. A feeling of immense frustration overwhelmed him as he realized that weeks of work had been in vain. Five years had passed since David found himself in that place. The notary office, once a place of mundane business, had become his prison. He was subjected to the orders of the old notary, tirelessly working among the old records and dusty shelves. His only goal was to find the way back to his family. David had almost forgotten what it felt like to have the sun on his face, the breeze in his hair. He had lost track of time because time itself seemed to bend and distort in that place. He was practically resigned to his situation, carrying out his monotonous tasks, when something extraordinary happened. A sound echoed through the hallway of the notary office, the sound of footsteps, footsteps that were not his or the notary's. His heart raced as he heard the door open, letting in a beam of light he hadn't seen in a long time. Desperate for a change, David dropped the mop he held in his hands and dashed toward the entrance. He knew he couldn't let that door close again. His breath was quickened, his body tense with anticipation. He reached out, mere inches from the doorknob, when the door started closing slowly. He made one final effort, stretching himself to the fullest, but couldn't reach the door in time. Darkness swallowed the entrance once more, 
and David let out a frustrated sigh. David quickly turned to see a man standing in the doorway, looking at him curiously. By the way he was dressed, he seemed to be a policeman or some public security agent. Without a second thought, David ran toward the man, a mixture of hope and desperation in his voice. Please, you need to help me. I've been trapped here for years. I. The man raised his hand in a gesture of interruption, his gaze serious and assessing. I know. David blinked, confused. You know? David was left speechless for a moment. No one besides him and the notary had crossed that door in years. He looked at the man, his eyes pleading for an explanation. The man, in a friendly gesture, nodded to the notary. It's been a while, my old friend. The notary squinted for a moment, and then a nostalgic smile crossed his wrinkled face. I knew you'd show up eventually, Samuel. David was perplexed, trying to understand the interaction between the two men. The atmosphere in the registry office felt tense, laden with uncertainty about what would come next. David looked from Samuel to the old notary, trying to assess the situation. His hands trembled, and his heart raced as he tried to decide what to do. Before he could formulate a plan, a lapse from Samuel allowed David to act on impulse. In a quick and desperate move, David lunged at Samuel and managed to take the gun from his holster. He pointed the gun at Samuel, his breath heavy. Don't take a step, David said with a trembling voice, the gun shaking in his hands. The old notary let out a short, almost amused laugh. Do you really think a gun can control this situation, David? David was nervous, his mind swirling with emotions. He didn't want to hurt anyone, but his determination to get back to his family compelled him to take drastic measures. I don't want to hurt anyone, he said hoarsely. The notary looked at him with wise and understanding eyes. David, you've already paid your debt. The notary's words caught him off guard, causing him to lower the gun for a moment. What do you mean? The old man smiled, as if he had expected this reaction. You're free to go, David. David felt a mix of relief and confusion. He slowly lowered the gun, his eyes fixed on Samuel, who seemed calm and unshaken. David was still processing the information, feeling the tension in his shoulders begin to dissipate. He finally lowered the gun completely and placed it on the ground. With hesitant steps, David began to make his way towards the exit. As he passed through the door, the darkness gave way to a terrifying landscape. He found himself on a desolate and dark plateau. The city that once existed had disappeared, replaced by vast emptiness. The wind howled, and a sense of loneliness enveloped him. He looked to the horizon, trying to comprehend what lay before him. He couldn't believe that this was the reality that awaited him. With cautious steps, he began to walk across the plateau. The ground felt firm beneath his feet, but the feeling of being in a strange and desolate world was overwhelming. He struggled to find a point of reference, something that could indicate where he was and where to go. As he walked, the landscape slowly began to change. The ground seemed to slope gently. He looked around, and his breath caught. He was on top of an immense mountain, his view extending as far as his eyes could reach. The vastness of the landscape left him speechless. He felt as though he was at the top of the world, at the highest point of reality. The magnitude of the terrifying and desolate scene stunned him. David felt small and insignificant. Finally, he reflected. I'm ready.